I've been learning game development for over seven years. If I could go back and start over from scratch, these are some of the things that I would do differently. First, I would focus on developing for PC and not for mobile. When I first started out, I was dead set on developing for Android and iOS because foolishly, I thought it would be easier. It turns out that I was very wrong. It's both more difficult from a technical standpoint and from a marketing standpoint to develop for Android and iPhone than it is for PC. At least that's what I've learned in my experience. From a technical standpoint, when you're dealing with phones, you have to deal with things such as different screen sizes, touch settings, and also the hardware differences. Phones typically are not going to be as powerful as a computer, so you really have to think about performance a lot more than you do on PC. Also, consider the types of games that you want to make. A lot of mobile games are free-to-play games with psychological monetization strategies. If you're looking to make a creative game and something that you would really like to play, chances are you're going to have a lot more freedom to experiment with that if you're developing for PC than if you're developing for mobile. If you want to have a successful game on mobile, you really have to lean into the psychological angle, and chances are in order to make a game stand out, you either really have to get lucky or you have to have a big marketing budget behind you in order to pay for ads to get the game boosted. The Google Play Store and iOS Store are very, very saturated markets, and it's hard to break out in that niche. On top of all of this, the process of putting a game onto Google Play and iOS is very difficult. It was a little bit easier when I got started, but now in order to even open up a Google Play a developer account and get a game on there, you have to have a bunch of people, I think the number is 20, play test your game for two weeks straight. On top of that, Google also has some crazy legal requirements now, which means that you have to have your public address displayed on your profile if you want to have a developer account. This means that people could see where you live if you're just a hobbyist developer working from home. Trying to put games on the Apple Store is also incredibly difficult. You need to have access to a MacBook computer and learn how to use Xcode, as well as learning to deal with things like provisioning profiles just in order to upload a game. On the flip side, putting a game onto PC and onto Steam is fairly straightforward. Second, I would learn version control a lot sooner than I originally did. If you're unfamiliar with version control, then it's something you definitely need to start using in your game development projects. Think of it like a checkpoint system. If you're playing a game and your character dies, you're not likely going to have to go back to the very start of the game. You're just going to go back to the last checkpoint. That's kind of like what version control is, only you decide when those checkpoints are happening. Version control also lets you experiment freely with your code. Say you want to add a new plugin, which you're worried might mess up your game, or even if you want to upgrade your Unity version, but you're worried that that might cause issues, you can open up a separate branch on your version control, make those experiments, and if things get messed up, then no big deal. You can just set it back to where you left off. Before I learned version control, in order to transfer my Unity projects back to my home computer, I would either put it on Dropbox, or I would put it onto a USB stick and manually transfer it. I can recall that several times this resulted in conflicted files, missing files, and just all around inconveniences. Version control is a tried and true system that already works. If I had been using version control back then, it would have been far simpler to just pick up exactly where I left off and jump from one computer to the next without any issue. Finally, version control is also how you can collaborate with other developers on your game. I also teach kids coding and game development part-time, and that includes teaching them version control. I often say that if a 10-year-old can learn how to use version control, then an older programmer certainly can too. Let me know if you would like to learn more about version control, and I'd be happy to make another video specifically about it. Third, I would spend less time trying to reinvent the wheel. I can remember on earlier projects, I would spend massive amounts of time trying to get my UIs to look proper, by meticulously manipulating the X and Y positions of my various UI elements. Whereas if I had just done a quick Google search, I probably would have realized that Unity has vertical and horizontal and even grid layout groups, which do this automatically for you. If it seems like you're spending a lot of time trying to do something in Unity, where it feels like there should be a better way to do this, it only takes a quick Google search or a ChatGPT search to find out if you're right and Unity already has a tool to make that task a lot simpler. 
I recall that I even made a script that essentially did the same thing as a layout group already did in Unity, where again, that component already existed, and I could have just saved myself a lot of time by not trying to reinvent the wheel. Are you just getting started on your own game dev journey? Do you want to learn how to make games on your own? Currently, I have a free YouTube playlist on how to make a 2D platformer game in Unity. At the time of this recording, the playlist is about halfway done, and I posted a link to it down in the video description, so feel free to check it out. Fourth, I would start learning how to make 2D game art back when I originally started learning game development. In fact, I've really only started learning how to make my own 2D art assets very recently, and I can highly recommend the YouTube channel Nonsensical 2D for giving me the motivation to get started on doing this and giving it a try with learning how to draw some hand-drawn art. Up until now, I've pretty much exclusively relied on either purchasing assets or collaborating with others in order to work on game projects. I've never been someone who could draw even stick figures, so it's really been difficult to believe in myself that I could even learn how to do something like creating my own art assets. But again, I think if I had put in the effort back when I first started learning game development, I might not be great at it today, but I certainly would feel a lot more confident about my abilities rather than just getting started on this journey now. Even if you don't want to learn how to create your own 2D art assets, Simply having that art background would at least give you the ability to learn how to put a scene together properly. Because when it comes to putting a scene together, there's a lot that goes into color choices, how to layer assets, how to make things look 3D even if you're in a 2D game, and how to just make a scene really come together. So again, I have to give a shout out to the Nonsensical 2D YouTube channel for helping me get started on this journey. Hopefully, if you're in a similar position as me, they can help you get started too. Fifth, I would start applying for Unity developer jobs a lot sooner than I originally did. Now, I already put together an entire YouTube video on how I got my first Unity developer job, so I won't really go into that here in this video, but I'll link that video down in the video description and you can go check it out if you're curious to hear more about that. However, I will say that the job market back then was far easier to get into than it is today. These days, I find that a game developer job immediately has hundreds of people applying to it just a couple of hours after it's been posted. Contrast this to when I was first applying for jobs with a far more junior resume than I have today, and I was able to get game developer job interviews without too much difficulty, even if it didn't always result in a second or third interview. At least I was able to get my foot in the door. I think if I had started applying for game developer jobs sooner than I originally did, I would have surprised myself and gotten into the industry far sooner than I originally did, which was in my mid to late 30s. Chances are you're more experienced than you think you are, even if you don't believe it yourself. This is simply called imposter syndrome, and it's something that I certainly had and probably still do to a certain degree. Finally, I would work on smaller projects. This isn't something that I was the worst at, but it wasn't something that I was the best at either. I did tend to scope creep my first Android games, which really was a mistake because they only ended up getting a few players and they didn't really end up going anywhere. I spent a considerable amount of time working on them when really I could have just wrapped them up a lot sooner and gotten started onto the next project. By comparison, I recently put together a short, simple 3D ball puzzle game, which I launched on itch.io and promoted on the Survivor subreddit, and it got several thousand plays. This was a game that I challenged myself to put together in only a day or two, and I did, and it was a lot more satisfying and fun to see this game do well and take off and for people to enjoy playing it. Having smaller projects means that you can also add these to your portfolio by simply rapidly prototyping games. It also gives you the ability to try and test things out and to see if they resonate with people and if they work. I wish I had done a lot more of this, trying out different concepts, learning from my mistakes and moving on faster rather than sinking a massive amount of time in into single projects, which ultimately didn't go anywhere. Have you made any of these same mistakes that I made? Let me know down in the comments, and let me know if there is anything you would like to go back and tell yourself if you could start game dev all over again too. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.